Hello, I'm back with another video. So, last week I decided to try the Draw This In Your Style Challenge, and I've been wanting to do this for a really long time now. I always thought it was a super fun thing that people came up with, and for sure you can see how popular it is. Like, it's it's been going strong for years now. I remember seeing it for the first time maybe like a couple of years ago on Twitter, and at some point I even started a folder on my computer where I saved like all these really cool characters that I saw that were part of the challenge that I really wanted to draw myself. But unfortunately, it's something that I never got around to. But it's never too late, so here we are. I wanted this video to be a little more casual than the last one. Actually, what was the last one? Never mind, the last one was as casual as it gets. <laughs> so I guess, again, I'm making a casual kind of like a chatty video where I just want to talk about stuff and not so much focus on the process of the drawing because I don't know, I guess it's more or less like the same as my usual stuff, which you all must have already seen my previous videos. So maybe get yourself a cup of coffee or some tea and let's draw. So as some of you may know, I've been posting my art online for years and years and years. And if I'm to think of the top most commonly asked questions ever, they would be what pen do you use, what are your photoshop brushes, and how did you find your style? <laughs> no lie. So I thought it would be apt to talk about style because that's what the challenge is all about. I will say that this is just going to be a bunch of my thoughts as they come to me. And I'm not gonna focus too much on my personal style journey, I don't think, at least I'm not planning to, because I want to do an in-depth video later on showing you guys some examples and flipping through like my really old sketchbooks maybe and just showing you guys a bunch of stuff. So this is not gonna be that and here I'm just gonna focus on the topic at large and just giving you some of my thoughts on it. So. I guess I just want to start with defining what I personally think style is and how I look at it. Overall, I think it's a pretty difficult thing to define because a person's style can be expressed, it's basically expressed through their preferences, uh, whether it be subject matter or color choices or technical aspects of the drawing so whether it's angular or more soft whether it focuses on line work or lighting or colors or if it's more expressive or if it's more tight so I could go on forever about that which is why it's it's kind of a difficult thing to pinpoint but it seems to be something that a lot of artists often think about and worry about especially in the beginning stages of their art journey and I certainly know that I was one of them. This is something that I thought about a lot when I was just getting into draw like taking drawing seriously. I mean it was a very long time ago but those were still questions that plagued me at some point. But I don't quite understand where a person is coming from when they do ask the question point blank. How do you find your style or how did you, how do I find my style? <laughs> Whichever. The reason why I have a hard time relating to that specifically is because I think I've always sort of been a person who prefers to just figure things out alone in my head, which is not necessarily a good thing, but it never even occurred to me when I was starting drawing that I could just like ask people. Maybe that's why I never really did, but I also wanted to mention that I think I thought about it in a very different... I just framed the question differently. It wasn't so much style was the thing that I was worried about, it was just... I, I was just frustrated at my lack of skills to be able to replicate things that I saw. So. I guess I was fortunate enough to start drawing at such a young age or start or having started to take it seriously at such a young age that I was mostly just going on every whim. I, I would see something that I thought was really cool and 
it was like this huge mind-blowing experience to have discovered this awesome thing and I just wanted to make my own version of it or something like that. So by thing, I mean specifically, I remember being obsessed with Pokemon. I just thought it was the coolest thing at the time. I was like nine or eight or something. And I just thought the idea was cool and I wanted to make up my own Pokemon. So that was the thought. And rolling with that, I was just drawing whatever I could. And, and then obviously I'm talking about eight years old. That's a little too young, but even jumping five years in the future when I was drawing all the time and it was like my favorite thing to do like in middle school I guess when I was around 12 13 I was obsessed with Sailor Moon like many many of us were uh, of a similar age there's a big generation of artists that got super inspired by Sailor Moon when they were little but anyways it was just the cool thing that I saw and then it would always be like on to the next thing and my, I guess I didn't really suffer from an identity crisis when it comes to art. It was all just frustrations at not being able to replicate the cool thing. So I guess that's a pretty smooth segue into talking about uh, the dreaded question of whether it's okay or not to copy things. Because I know that it's like one of those hot, hot button issues in the art community and people have a variety of opinions on this. and. Um, I'm not gonna lie, my opinion about this in particular has changed drastically over the the long period of time that I've been drawing for fun and now as a career. Uh, but I'm obviously just gonna talk about what I think now. I do think that copying is something that is largely unavoidable, but I think it's kind of like a nuanced question where you have to really talk about specifically what does copying entail. So what I did personally when I was little is I saw something that I thought was really cool and I didn't trace because I thought that was boring, frankly. Like I just thought that duplicating an image was boring. So my my obsession was always to take something that I think is cool, but make it my own. So that was just, I guess, an innate thing that I was driven by. I always wanted to make my own version of something. So I wanted to make my own Pokemon or my own like Sailor Moon characters or something like that. So I really wanted to be able to capture the same beautiful aesthetic or the style that I really love, but I did not want to trace and I did not want to copy what I saw in front of me. So what I did, I guess, was just try to emulate the style as best as I can just by looking. So I guess that is closer to being inspired than outright trying to copy certain things. So this was huge because it kind of laid the foundation of a certain type of mindset that I wanted to mention at some point in this video. And that mindset is being very analytical and trying to look at what you think is really cool about something and to like really get down to the most minute of details of what exactly makes this artwork so so attractive to you so i guess when i if i can remember about sailor moon specifically the cartoon was a lot of fun to watch and i liked the characters and all that and like the setting but what really really made me fall in love with it was the the artist uh, Naoko Takeuchi, I think her name is, her her illustration. So I discovered scans of her art book online and I was just completely baffled by how pretty everything was and it had this like beautiful airbrush quality to it and obviously as a kid I had no access to any sort of fancy art materials but I was so desperate to capture this this look and this feel that the artwork had that I had to just hack my way and figure out how to use color pencils which is the only thing I had at the time and to try to make it look as similar as possible to what I was looking at right and I guess this is the kind of thing that really makes you notice what it is that you're trying to emulate so I really at, around that time learned how to create gradients with like smooth gradients with a pencil crayon 
just out of pure necessity because I was so desperate to make it look similar that uh, I had to really learn control of a pencil to try to make it look like it was airbrushed, you know? So stuff like that. And, and it made me really look at the details that I saw in the drawings and really, really dissect every part of the image. And at that time, I was still really young and my taste was... Mm, how shall I put it? It was less refined and I didn't have as strict preferences as I do now. And obviously with, with every year, like I, I know better and better what I like and what I don't like. But at the time, I was a lot more receptive to everything. So I was kind of just taken by the whole thing. And so I didn't really delete. I didn't make editing choices as in, oh, this is something I don't like, so I'm not going to do this. But that's something I want to talk about next, where basically once you once you get a grip on some sort of basic skill where you understand how to use tools like pencils or I don't know, pens and you you know the the very, very bare minimum basics. I'm not even talking about anatomy here, I'm just talking about the control of basic art tools that you have at your disposal. Once you have that and you've kind of went through a phase of being obsessed with the one thing that you think is the coolest, you can start to start to obviously move to to other things and add to them. So it's a very additive process where you learn something different from each thing that you become obsessed with. And I do think that obsession is a pretty big driving force for an artist or maybe any creative person where I think like when I think back on it I I would get very obsessed with every one of those things whether it be a show or like a comic that I was super into at the time and those like bursts of obsession really really propelled me forward in terms of how much I learned about art because I would get stuck on every one of these artists I, I will make another video where I will detail <laughs> the actual journey chronologically and I will list all the artists that I was obsessed with for a little bit but overall with each one of them I I would just do the thing where I would look at the art obsessively and when I try to sit down and draw stuff of my own I would just emulate all the little things that I liked about their art and I I really, really looked for the tiniest of things, like how sharp certain angles are, how thick the lines are, where exactly they put shadows, how how they stylize all the little things. And with time, the more people you study, uh, the more you, the more your personal voice will start to emerge, and and it will happen organically. One thing I'll say is, despite even having obviously studied from so many different artists, I did always have a certain quality to my line work that I think is actually innate. Like, I don't think it came from anywhere. I mean, I could be wrong, but as far as I know, it was something that was present way before I even tried studying another artist's work or before I even thought about it and I always knew that I was a predominantly line oriented person so I guess everyone kind of is when they're little because obviously when you pick up a pencil you, you make a line you don't try to render a drawing or anything but somehow just expressing something expressing like a sort of energy was always innate to me through line work specifically and other things like rendering and choosing colors and lighting and stuff like that that did not come naturally so much so i had to put a lot more effort into getting better at those things but line work was um something that i've always preferred over anything else anyways that is a huge tangent so circling back to the issue of copying and or whether it's okay to copy or not i think i just want to mention that the term, I think, gets conflated a lot of the time and where most of the arguments come from is I think that there's a really thin line between copying and studying and I don't even really know where that line should be drawn, but I guess 
just sparing you from all the weird philosophical <laughs> uh, meanderings of what I think about this issue. I think the important thing to remember is that it's a bad thing to focus on one person for too long or to even just focus on one artist at a time. I think the healthiest thing to do uh, when trying to figure out what you like and your preferences is to just reference as many people as you possibly can and to think of like an analogy maybe it's kind of like uh, <laughs> cooking or something and uh, if you want to find your if you want to express yourself you know to make something your own um, there's a bunch of ingredients that go into a recipe and those ingredients are all the different artists that you like for whatever reason and if you take a little thing from each one of them and put them into a new recipe. This is a horrible analogy. It doesn't work on any level because people usually just follow recipes to the T and get a very predictable result. So yeah, scratch that. Forget about the analogies. Clearly that's not something I'm good at at all. So I'm just gonna avoid doing that from now on. Yeah, the best way to go about finding your style, so to say, is to just really, really pay attention to what you like about other people's art and not to put any one artist on a pedestal, like never to look at one person and to think that their art is perfect. Because, I mean, it might be difficult to do that at first when you're so amazed by all these different people and their art seems so attractive and all that. But if you're just a little more practical, practical about it and if you approach it from a more like, I don't know, calm calm way um you can definitely find something you don't like about everyone's art and it's not even that it's like a judgment it's just a personal preference and there's a big difference between those two things if you don't like something that doesn't mean it's bad if you don't like something about if you don't like some one aspect about someone's art it doesn't make it any better or worse it's just a personal preference and that's a really good way to look at it like it's is perfectly fine to take one thing that you like from somebody and uh, try to implement it into your own process or something like that. Anyways, and one more thing is I do think that it can get a little bit overwhelming to kind of consciously be in search of your style. So I think a better way to look at it is to kind of just draw what you want and draw what you like and think of it as a constant work in process where you're like the editor. You're just editing your preferences and you're taking away things that no longer appeal to you and constantly adding things that do and that's pretty much how your voice will emerge. And that's actually a pretty good segue into another thing that I wanted to talk about which is personally I do remember having style crises you know here and now and then i guess the not too often it doesn't happen too often so by too often i mean like it'll happen once every like few years or something like that and it's usually directly related to a particular emotional low overall if i'm in a bad place in life and for some reason i'm just questioning everything and anything and identity crisis sometimes results from that and those are usually the times when i will for some reason look at my art and suddenly it'll seem really foreign to me i definitely went through something like this a couple of years ago where i was observing popular accounts on instagram and I was noticing how most of the most popular people on social media platforms, like just artists specifically, they have a very cohesive look to their work and I just always admired that particular aspect of things but in really low times of my life when I was like really unsure about what I was doing with my art. I kind of looked at it as like, man, why why is it that it seems so easy for some people to just draw arguably the same thing? <laughs> I mean, the same thing as putting it like, I guess, as being too reductive, but overall very similar subject matter, like color schemes, so cohesive and being able to keep that up for 
so long i just don't i just couldn't understand why i couldn't do that you know like why i when i look at my work it just it's like all over the place and i it almost makes me feel like i suffer from some sort of multiple personality thing where there are just some days i feel like drawing digitally and sometimes i, I want to make it polished and airbrushed some days i want to throw a texture on it other days i just want to draw with watercolor sometimes i want to draw things that are very sharp and aggressive looking some days i want to draw very soft things where the edges are blurry and the half of the image is like washed out you know and i don't know it can be kind of like a mind fuck sometimes where i don't know what it, what my style even is and then it just kind of really starts to spiral out of control and I'm like, who am I? Like, what does this mean about me? Like, does this mean that I don't know who the fuck I am and I'm just doing a bunch of random shit that's not gonna amount to anything? And I start to go really hard on myself for just not being able to like pick a thing and stick to it. And then, you know, all these negative thoughts come in where it's like, well, if you were like these other artists who actually have their shit together and picked a freaking thing and they can just stick to it they're way more successful and like they get approached for their work because it's cohesive and you know it's coherent and it's understandable whereas you just jump from one thing to the other and like why can't you just be satisfied with one thing like why do you got to keep trying all these different whatever materials and whatnot i don't know and then it just completely gets out of control but the reason why I brought this whole thing up is I've discovered over the years that I think this is something that comes from putting too much value on your creative output and kind of like expecting it to define you as a person. So like when when that line starts to blur and you start to identify with your art so much that you you just it, you think of it as something that's supposed to define you as a person that's where it gets really toxic so for me i found that in times like that i need to just freaking relax pull back and remind myself that this does not define me like my art is not who i am and it doesn't dictate my value as a person or whatever and plus like i don't really have anything to be worried about anyways because usually this kind of stuff is just it's like these blinders that you put on yourself and it's important to catch yourself when it happens and not allow your brain to just kind of spin it out of control because i mean as far as i can tell when i'm stable and normal and i'm not too anxious about anything i do have recognizable things about my work that transcend any media i think i mean at least my friends can corroborate that <laughs> so i try and hey that's like another useful thing too um to have people who you trust that can just pull you back from being you know spinning out of control essentially but yes so the point that i was trying to make is that your art does not define you as a person and it, it you shouldn't put too much value on it and in it and yeah, like it's important to just, I guess, have other interests and other hobbies and to not put all your emotional eggs into one basket, if that makes any sense. So yeah, I mean, I don't really know how to tie that into style neatly, but I, I do think it's very relevant because I, I feel like because style is so closely related to like your personal expression and that can be so detrimental to how you see yourself and how you want others to see you like i think it, it can very easily kind of get out of control so i think the healthiest way to look at your personal style is just as an evolving evolving work in progress and something that can change and doesn't have to stay the same it, it, the only person that you want to please with is yourself obviously i mean i'm talking about strictly in the context of your personal relationship to your art this doesn't necessarily have anything to do with having a job or having to fit a certain style um to make a living like that's an entirely different topic this is just 
about your personal relationship to your art and your style or whatever you perceive it to be and i guess the search for style so yeah i mean at this point i've carried on rambling about this for way too long and i think it's time to wrap it up i did not talk about the process of this artwork at all but i just wanted to give a shout out to the artist whose work helped create this video and that artist is La Lo Putin. I'm definitely butchering that. I have no idea how to pronounce it, truth be told, but uh, she's an artist who I found on Instagram and I really, really love her work. Um, she draws a lot of witchy girls and uh, uses pastel colors and I think it's absolutely delightful and you should all go check her out. I will leave a link in the description. So thank you so much for uh, watching this video or listening to it, whichever you did. I hope you found something useful from it and I did not expect it to be this long, so I apologize for that. But regardless, I hope you all have a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!